Hi everybody, so today we're going to make um, vegetable soup and brown bread. We're going to start with our brown bread. So first thing we'll do is we'll put our oven on to, if you have fan assisted, 175. And if it's not fan assisted, assist it 190 degrees. Okay, this is the easiest brown bread ever to make. First thing we're going to do is we're going to line our loaf tin. And we are going to the same as we lined our baking tin the last time. Some grease proof, long there, and then that was good, Katie. You see that I fell on the floor, and then cut a diagonal cross down through each corner like that. This is a really, really easy brown bread to make. We used to make this in one of the hotels I worked in, and. Uh, when it was really busy, we could have to maybe make, say, the weekend, we might have to make maybe 150, 200 loaves, and they're all made individually. So, like, they weren't just made in a big, huge uh, mix. We have to mix each each one individually. That's what we're doing, like, just line it in. There's a, this bread rises a little bit, not a whole lot, but it does rise a little bit. So, what we need is we need three cups of wholemeal flour. Mix all our dry ingredients together first. So three cups of wholemeal flour. This was a secret recipe in the hotel I worked in, and our executive chef apparently was a grandmother's recipe or something. So we weren't allowed to give the recipe in. But uh, you don't often have customers coming in and going, oh, it's not grand bread, they have the recipe. So we used to be kind of gone. And go the recipe, like it's kill it. So we used to make a couple of different recipes as we go along. So every go to a hotel and you ask them for a recipe, and you go home and you make it according to the recipe, and it doesn't burn out right. There's a possibility to do the right recipe. And that's, that. that's a secret, okay? So I'm telling you that, right? And here you are sharing the recipe. <laughs> oh well, that hotel is long since gone. It's now apartment blocks. Um, so then what we need is we need a teaspoon of bread salt. Okay, and what I do is when I'm using bread salt, sometimes you would do the hard lumps in it, so I just turn it out the back of my hand and just press it down with the spoon and make sure there's no lumps in it. Just did you say how much porridge you put in? One cup. I'm sure I did. Maybe, maybe you did. I just we weren't listening. Probably not. But we'll find out, won't we? Then we just mix all the dry ingredients together with a wooden spoon. All mixed up there. Okay, to this you're going to add one pint of buttermilk. Pour in there, and then you just mix it really well to make sure you get all your dry ingredients coated. It's really healthy brown bread, Katie. There's no fat in it, but apart from the fat in the buttermilk, there's no there's no butter in it, and there's no sugar either. So, so you just want to get a good mix. It should look about that consistency. All the dry bits next year. That 
That's it. And you just flop it into your tin. Like with the um, flapjacks we made, you want enough grease proof paper kind of overlapping it so that you just lift it straight out of the tin. If you don't have any baking paper, what you can do is you can oil your tin, but you need to use a little bit of vegetable oil, but oil it really, really well. So like when I was working in hotels, you could make making 100, 150, 200 loaves of this in a day, you know, if you're particularly busy. Of course, we didn't go lining every tin with baking paper like that. What we used to do is we used to just swirl some vegetable oil around the tin and then pour it out. So I'm just going to flatten it on the top. If you're using a fan assisted oven, it'll take 55 minutes. If you're using a um, non fan assisted, It'll take an hour and five minutes. I might just tear some of that paper off so it's not, it doesn't catch fire or anything in the room. It's even enough to it. And when it's cooked, you can just lift it straight out. Like I said, that will rise slightly because there's not a whole lot of rise in it. So you want to make sure you leave enough space clear over the tin so it has enough room to rice don't do what I do sometimes put it in there's a rack on top of it and it sticks to the top rack so I'm going to put that in the middle of the oven like I said fan assisted oven it can take 55 minutes non fan assisted an hour and five minutes so while that's doing now we can actually put on our soup are you struggling <laughs> Here. The vegetable soup, you can usually put any vegetables you like in it. If you have any leftover vegetables from yesterday's dinner, a bit of mashed potato or carrots or whatever, you can throw them all in there. Uh, the vegetable soup is great to use up leftovers. Um, I was going to say something else there, but I'll get rid of them and say it. They can be soaking there in the sink. Now for your soup you'll need butter. Plain flour, uh, with stock cubes, your potatoes, carrots, onions, and beef, some red lentils, and um, I have some chickpeas left over from the vegetarian lasagna I did the last day, so I'm going to throw them in. If you want uh, you should have some mixed frozen vegetables, so I'm going to use some of those as well. Now, so I'm going to get heavy sauce. I have to try and put down the quantity I usually put in the Okay, yeah, so I'm not making a big industrial size pot of soup like I usually end up doing. Okay, 
a little couple of medium sized potatoes. You can use a peeler or, or, or a knife, I find a knife handier for potatoes. I'm kind of talking to myself, Katie, I'm going to go. I'm confused as to why a colander is your receptacle of choice. I'm going to wash them all, you see, and if I put them all in the colander, then I can just wash them all. Actually, I have a parcel here as well, I want to throw in. If you have them, if you don't, don't worry. See, I can throw them all in. The, you see, look at Casey, I'll show you my genius in a minute. You'd be amazed because, of course, I needed a colander. But of course, I won't be surprised because I already know that you're a genius, of course. Mm. Oh, thanks, Casey. Will you look over? <laughs> An onion, carrot. These carrots aren't that big, so I'm going to do three. Parsnip. If you don't have a parsnip, don't worry. If you have them there, I can throw it in. Um, you can throw mushrooms. There'll be a few mushrooms. Um, actually, do you know vegetable soup is great for you? You know the day before you go and get your grocery shopping and you've all little bits of vegetables hanging around the fridge but it's not quite enough to... You might have like a sad looking carrot and a few sad looking mushrooms and that. Chop them all up in your soup. Or after Christmas, Christmas dinner. And you left all the vegetables. I always left all the vegetables for Christmas dinner. Just outside you make soup the next day, I throw them all in. The only thing I wouldn't put in vegetable soup is sprouts because they'll make it very bitter. But apart from that, any other vegetables you have left over the vegetables, you can throw them in to the soup the next day. I've been all tidy now, Katie, because you record me usually you know, when I'm making this is fresh peels all over the place and I'm not a tidy so I'm trying to make a conscious effort to, to be tidy. As you say that some like carrot fuzz <laughs> onto the table. <laughs> Don't do. Now and your leek. When you're doing leek, right? What I do is now to cut cut off all the, the, the top leaves on it and just peel off the outer leaf on it. Okay? And you see the leek, they're very mucky inside there, look. So what you do is you cut it down halfway here. Not, don't, don't cut the root, just leave the root intact. I'll show you now. Bring that over here then. And you can actually wash them with the top and pull out the leaves and get in under the leaves. Without it all falling apart and falling down the sink on you. Because they can be very mucky inside. That one's not too bad. Sometimes they can be very dirty. The best way if you're doing a load of vegetables is to particularly say leafy vegetables, like cabbage and kale and stuff like that that can be very mucky and you can have lots of little slugs and insects inside, is fill your sink with water and put loads of salt in it. And then pull the leaves apart and just throw them into the sink and all the leaves will stay floating on the top of the water and all the little slugs and bits of dirt will actually fall down to the bottom of the sink. And then you just scoop the leaves up off the top of it. So usually if I was doing say cabbage, I'd fill the sink up with cold water, plenty of salt in it, and I'd leave it sit for about five minutes and then I just scoop the leaves off the top and leave all the slugs down the bottom. I remember when we were kids, my father would we used to grow vegetables in the garden and uh, he'd make uh, he'd bring in cabbage out of the garden say for dinner. And he'd cook the cabbage and then we'd sit down to have our dinner. And we'd find an earwig or something in the cabbage. And be gone. Hey, there's an ear with me, cabbage, cabbage like there's an ear with me dinner. You can't be gone, what are you talking about? That's not an ear with that's protein. And then everyone's gone, oh, there's an ear with an ear And they go, no, look, they all want, they all want an ear with like, 
They all want protein. I'll be trying to convince you like there's nothing wrong with you if you eat it. Okay, so we're just going to, you don't have to be too fussy about how you chop them. Um, the smaller you chop them, the quicker a soup will cook. But I like to leave the cook away for an hour. An hour. It's just like there's no, um, there's no rush on it. The longer you cook it, actually, the more flavoursome it is. So just chop up your vegetables roughly. And when we put this on there, we're going to leave it cook away for about an hour. So I'm going to use the raw vegetables to start the soup. I'll put that right down next the root there like that. Now what we need is we need some butter. If you have a small pack, you're going to use half that. If you have the big block, you're going to use a quarter. I like your very precise measurements. <laughs> it's like half of a packet. The only time you measure is when you're baking. You have to measure when you're baking. But like, according to your, um, get used to cooking, you, you, you kind of know by, your, by using your eyes. And while that's melting, I'm going to fill the kettle because I'm going to make some stock. So you want a better leader with stock. So if you're using vegetable stock cubes, um, you're going to use two stock cubes and a litre of water. And what I like to do is, if you have to, I like to put a chicken and a vegetable stock cube in. And um, of course, if you're vegan, vegetarian you might not want to use chicken you might want to just use two vegetables well if you're vegan that amount of butter might be a little problematic oh yeah butter might be problematic you can use some vegan oil or something is there such a thing as vegan oil some flour oil or something well, i mean <laughs> is some flour oil vegan is it okay, so i'm not even going to humor that question is it, is it though is it yeah it is isn't it well like it doesn't come from an animal. Yeah, so it's vegan. Yeah, it's unless right. you consider sunflowers to be animals. <laughs> so I'm using these little stock pots and I'm using one vegetable and one chicken, but you two vegetables. Some water boiling there. It's a good thing we have our, our quiet kettle. Yeah. Now, you control your raw vegetables. Like I said, start off with your raw vegetables. Oh, I missed, Katie, I missed. You actually couldn't really see on camera, so you could have gotten away with that. I'm oh, sorry. And now I have some cauliflower and broccoli I have left over from yesterday. I have some frozen peas, I have a few mushrooms here as well. I'm going to chop them up and put them in. And um, I also have some chickpeas left over from our vegetarian uh, 
bolognese that I'm going to throw in. So just basically anything, anything you want, okay, you can throw in. The other thing as well that, that uh, I'm going to put in is I'm going to put half a cup of lentils. Um, do you remember we were saying the other day, red lentils are full of protein, but they also give a nice uh, texture to the soup. I better get clean chat and bar kitchen. I was going to see what this feels like. So you just want to sweat your vegetables off. I'm just waiting on that to start heating up a bit there. Chop them up any way you want. If you've any tin tomatoes left over in the fridge or passata or from anything, uh, I don't. I used to fry them the other day, but if you have your half bottle of passata that you've left over from your lasagna you can or your bolognese, you can throw that in. So start off with your raw vegetables and just sweat them off there in the butter. Oh, and what I can do is I can be washing off my lentils, couldn't I? You have your lentils out there. About a half cup of lentils. For any black kind of discoloured ones. There's one there, look, see, that's what we're looking to pick out. Just, they're no the harm, but they, they, they just they can give a very bitter taste. I'm going to wash them off like we did the last day. The last time we were making the vegetarian bolognese, we were cooking these really, really slowly on a very low heat because we didn't want them to lose their texture. But with the soup, or if you're putting them in a stew or anything like that, that doesn't matter. You can cook them whatever way you want. Um, you don't have to be simmering them gently because uh, it doesn't matter if they're, if they're mushy because the soup is going to be blended anyway. That's a litre of stock. So now here we are because it's starting to... In here there says in there so you just want to sweat these off just very lightly cook them so i have that on four at the moment i'm going to turn it down to three make sure your butter is all melted it's just a fine block of butter in there for you know. and you see what you want the butter for is you're going to add flour in a minute and make a roux and a roux is basically flour and butter and it's the basis for any kind of thickened soup or sauce or stew or now I'm going to add some herbs in there as well so like I was saying the last day when you're using herbs the general rule is dried herbs start to cook and fresh herbs again with a little bit of pepper like the last day too I'm not putting any salt in because um we're using stock which tends to be very salty and if you, if you fancy more salt on it, you can always add it later. So now I'm going to get my little measuring spoon. And I'm going to put ooh, half a teaspoon of um, mixed herbs. And then a quarter teaspoon each of organo and thyme.
just waiting for the last bit of butter to melt there before I add my flour. Give her stock a little, a little mix up there. And depending on what um, leftover vegetables you're adding, uh, they can make your soup uh, thicker. So like if you're adding extra mashed potatoes in, it's going to make your soup that big thicker. But don't worry, all you can do is just add an extra drop of water in at the end if it's if it's very, very thick. So anyway, so that's all. The butter is all melted there and the vegetables are all lightly sweated off in the butter. Now we're going to add our flour. What you want is you want about a half cup of plain flour. Okay? Just sprinkle that all in there like that. And mix it in to make a roux. You turn that to make sure all your flour is incorporated in nicely to the butter. And just cook it out for a minute there. Just keep turning it so you don't get your flour sticking to the bottom. It's all nicely incorporated. You can't see any little flower bits. Start gradually adding the stock. So we're just pouring a little bit at a time, about a cup full at a time. And it's a trip. Very quiet today, Katie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and see so you add that slowly, the roux dissolves down into the, the stock. Okay, so now I have all the stock added in and I'm going to turn the saucepan, turn the saucepan down to one. And I'm just going to let that simmer away and now I'm going to throw in all my extra vegetables that I have. So I have a few mushrooms here I'm going to throw in. And I have some leftover cauliflower and broccoli. I'm going to throw in and a few peas. And I'm going to put in my half cup of red lentils now. So at this stage, if you've no leftover vegetables, you should have a bag of frozen vegetables that you can throw in uh, maybe a cup of frozen vegetables. I'm going to mix all that in there now. And I'm just going to leave that simmer away for about an hour. It'll cook away. 
And like I said, if it seems a bit thick, you can actually add an extra drop of water in. Particularly safe for using lentils. Oh, I actually have some, um, what you call them, chickpeas as well in the fridge left over from our vegetable bolognese. I'm going to throw them there as well. So you can, you can literally throw anything in. The only vegetables I've never put in vegetable soup are, like I said earlier, Brussels sprouts um, or aubergines. Because they all make your soup very, very uh, bitter. I don't think you should put aubergine in anything. Yeah, to no, be honest. Yeah. So I'm not going to put all them. So that's enough there. And I'll just leave that simmer away on one for about an hour. That's a little bit thick, so I'm just going to put an extra little drop of water in there. Because remember, your lentils will thicken it as well. So and that's it. We'll just leave that simmer away for an hour while our brown bread is cooking. There's our soup that has been cooking away on the top of the cooker there for about an hour. And I've taken out my brown bread. And what I'm going to do with the brown bread now is I've left it in the tin for about 10 minutes. So I took that out about 10 minutes ago. And I'm just going to turn it out onto a clean tea towel. Remove the baking paper. And then I'm going to wrap it up in the tea towel to cool down the rest of the way. And that just stops the crust of it getting really, really hard because the crust of that can tend to be very hard. So, I'm just gonna leave that there then to cool down. Now our soup, this is all ready now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually blend it using this stick blender. Or if you have, um, a jug blender or an ordinary uh, tabletop blender, you can blend it in that. But if you haven't got any of these things to blend it, what you can do is put a bowl down into your sink with a sieve. And let's take this detail here. You can actually just pass it through a sieve. Right? So just put a tea towel on your counter there. When I'm pouring hot liquids, I always put them down into the sink to pour because there's less chance of getting burnt. Just a ladle or a big spoon and just literally pass it through the sieve like that and you can actually push that right down like that and don't throw away the vegetables that are in the sieve you can actually just throw them into the soup it won't be as smooth as if you blended it using an electric blender but that'll um, break it down. You'll still have little chunks of vegetables in it, but that's okay. Just, just pass it all through like that. Um, so I'm going to blend it with this anyway. Um, and if you have a jug blender, you can use that. If not, pass it through the sieve. Put it down into your sink so there's less risk of boring yourself. And that's it. So that's today's lesson. Our next lesson is going to be cottage pie. So don't forget to take out your minced beef out of the freezer either the evening before and stick it in the fridge or the morning of the lesson and you can leave it in a cool place in your kitchen. And also, if you can peel your potatoes before the start of the lesson, then we'll have them ready to go. So you'll need about eight medium-sized potatoes, peel them, cut them in half and put them in a pot of cold water and we'll have them ready for our cottage pie. So see you then. Thank you.